Hello Exile, I am Mystic and today I'm bringing you a non cosprees non volts protector discharge guide. Okay, let's start with the basics. This build is based around cast on crit. You choose an attack skill, in this case Cyclone. You use that skill and when you crit an enemy with it, you proc the spell linked to Cyclone and cast on crit. So, for this build it procs Discharge. That's it for the basic idea behind that build. Let's move to the gearing part. The items necessary for the build first. For the amulet slot, we use Volt's Devotion. It provides us with some life and resistances. But most importantly, it generates endurance charges for our discharge. As soon as one power charge is used, it will generate an endurance charge. If you have too much currency lying around, you could also get a Volt's Devotion with one of these Val Implicits. Only get the additional curse if you have gloves with the Elemental Weakness Implicit. The second build enabling item is Inya's Epiphany. You can get this item from the Pale Court, for which you have to complete four five-part prophecies. These boots are pretty much made for discharge. They increase your damage and power charge sustained by a lot. Also, they have decent movement speed and life. For enchants, go with the Life Leech. The 0.4% version from Cruel Lab should be enough. The third item we need for this build is the Dominos Militant Faith Timeless Jewel for Inner Conviction. If you have the currency and want to min-max your build, get the jewel with area damage and elemental damage per 10 devotion. This jewel allows us to use a rare body armor instead of a vault's protector. The next thing you want to have is some cold damage to attacks, which brings us to our weapon. Best in slot for our weapon slot as a rare weapon is a Thorn Rapier, since it requires less dexterity than the other options. As for prefixes, you only need added cold damage, unless you have some on your rings or gloves. You don't want any other elemental damage to attacks on your gear, because you need the cold damage for the elemental equilibrium keystone on your passive tree. For suffixes, get attack speed, crit and crit multi. If you want to make gearing easier for you, you can craft hits can be evaded on the sword for 3 exalts, so you won't need any accuracy on your gear. There is also the option to try to craft the weapon with the prismatic fossil for 40-60% to 60 increased elemental damage, but it would require those 5 precise affixes and an open prefix. You can always fall back to Cosprey's Malice and socket a second discharge setup into it if you want. You just need more attributes for it. Keep that in mind when you get your gear. For the rest of the gear, you should focus on getting your resistances kept and a lot of life, so I won't mention it for every item. The items shown here all have the maximum values so you don't have to look them up. The body armor can have plus one to level of socketed active skill gems, which buffs our discharge. You could craft it yourself with a shaper base. Item level 80 is required for the plus one to gems, but if you want to try to get the T1 life, you should get an item level 86 body armor. It doesn't have to be a Val Regalia. Taking an energy shield based armor makes it easier to color later on. If you have the currency for it, you could try and craft it with faceted fossils, etheric fossils and pristine fossils. This would be very expensive, but it could result in a body armor with plus one to intelligence gems. Uh, socketed gems are supported by level one arcane surge and life. Possible crafts are you can apply an additional curse and percent or flat life. Only use the curse one if you have gloves with the curse implicit. For corruptions, there are some good outcomes as you can see on the item shown here. Percent increased maximum life is also a possibility. For the belt slot, you want to have a shaped item level 84 leather belt. 
the most important affixes on it are life and cooldown recovery speed. Cooldown recovery speed makes your cast on crit able to proc almost two times more per second. Best case scenario gives you about 25% more damage. I just put the affixes in tiers so you know what you could use. The increased damage craft is a prefix. Your gloves should just cap your resistances and give you a lot of life. The accuracy and cold damage affixes are only needed if your weapon isn't that good. For enchants there are three beneficial options. Commandment of Blades from Uberlab, Decree of Spite and Decree of Ire from the Merciless Lab. There are three good corruptions available. The attack base crit one, elemental weakness curse on hit and increased maximum life. Spell based crit is needed since it will be 100% in the end. Also that's why we don't get base crit on our body armor. If you have got tier gear and your resistances are already kept before you get your gloves there are also two unique options for this build. The null and void legion gloves and the shadows and dust class smiths. Both of these provide you with Rampage. Rampage is a kill streak mechanic that gives you movement speed, damage and some other effects for killing mobs without stopping. It has 13 tiers on which the effects stated on these uniques proc. The helmet should just be something you craft yourself. Get a helmet with a 30% chance for discharge to deal damage without removing charges and chant and craft it with pristine and metallic fossils for life and minus 9% lightning resistance to nearby enemies. You can also add scorched fossils to the mix for minus 9% fire resistance to the nearby enemies. There's one really good corruption for the helmet the plus one to maximum power charges, but only try to get it if you can afford a new helmet with the enchant. This counts for all items you can corrupt. The shield slot is very versatile. You can go pretty basic with life resistances and possibly accuracy if needed, but you could also get affixes like plus one to all maximum resistances from a shaped base and increased area of effect from an elder base. There are also three good crafts for damage. Gain 7-8% of lightning damage as extra chaos damage, chance to deal double damage and chance to deal double damage while focused. You can choose between three possible item bases. The Azumai Tower Shield for life, the Crusader Buckler for movement speed and an Arcan Kite Shield for some resistances. When you choose the base, please make sure you have the required attributes. For the ring slots, let's start with the rare ring. There are four good possible item bases. The diamond ring, the coral ring, two stone ring and prismatic ring. The most important thing on the ring slot is the poacher's mark curse on hit. It provides you with more power charge sustain thanks to inner conviction, gives you life and mana on hit and grants you 100% increased flash charges when you kill mobs. If you are lucky, you can get crit multiplier on the ring. For possible crafts you can get the increased damage prefix and either the aspect of the avian or the aspect of the spider suffix. The second ring you wanna get is the precursor's emblem. I'll just list you the affixes possible with their respective tiers. This ring can make your charge sustain way easier and boost your damage by a lot, but it can get pretty pricey. Okay, let's get to the flask setup. There are three suffixes you want to have on flasks, unless you gear towards immunity for those things. And those are bleed, freeze and curse immunity. The easiest way to get them is to spam alterations on your flasks until you get the wanted prefix and an open suffix. Then go to the menagerie and craft the suffix onto them. So, the flasks you want to have are a panicked divine life flask to craft of staunching on it for instant life recovery and bleed removal, a chemist's diamond flask to craft of warding onto it for curse immunity and a chemist's basalt flask to craft on heat on it for freeze immunity and physical damage reduction. An alchemist's quicksilver flask of adrenaline is always nice to have for extra movement speed 
but this can take some alterations and augmentations to craft, since you can't craft the adrenaline suffix via the menagerie. For the final flask we use an Elite Series Promise, for extra damage and life leech. Focus on the elemental role for this one. Sustaining those flasks while mapping shouldn't be a problem since we're using Poacher's Mark. As for the bandits, kill Oak and Creighton and help Alira for the mana region, the crit multiplier and the Auras. For the gem setups, I will put the level and quality behind the gem name. If any additional level or quality doesn't benefit the build or isn't worth to get, I will just leave it at 0 or 20 quality. The damage setup is as follows. Cyclone, cast on crit. Discharge, power charge on crit, increased crit strikes, and for the sixth link, you swap between increased area of effect for map clear and concentrated effect for bossing. As for auras, we take war banner for the accuracy, aura effect, and adrenaline, precision, flash and blood, and blood rage. Also, if you can fit aspect of the avian or spider on your gear, use it. Your cast when damage taken should be linked to steel skin, increased duration and wave of conviction for the lightning exposure. You can try different levels but I kinda like these gem levels, it gives your steel skin a 1711 buff damage cap. Your movement setup consists of flame dash, faster casting and arc and surge. If you want to add more power for bossing you can add a Val gem setup. To be fair, I only use Val Righteous Fire. In theory, Val Lightning Trap adds more damage, but you have to throw traps before engaging, and I personally didn't like that. Use it if you want. For the tree, you should focus on life, crit, power and endurance charges, crit multi, and jewel sockets. Put the Militant Faith Jewel here, and take the Pain Attunement Keystone, which is converted to Inner Conviction. Put the intuitive leap in this jewel socket to free up some passive points. I will post the pace spin of my character for path of building in the description. Get the ascendancies in this order. Normal lab, ambush and assassinate, cruel lab, unstable infusion, merciless lab, deadly infusion and uber lab, opportunistic. You shouldn't level with this build and don't build this as your first character in a league. Level with Orb of Storms and Wave of Conviction. Catmaster OP has a nice video on how to level fast with it for a fresh league. I will put a link to it and a passive tree in the description. It will cost some regrets to switch to this build but it's worth it when you don't have to struggle through the leveling process and get to maps fast. This build can run any map mod, even elemental reflect if you have enough crit for it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down in the comments or hit me up on stream at twitch.tv forward slash mystic. I mostly stream in German, but I have no problem answering your questions in English if you have any. So, thank you guys for watching, I hope you like the build and see you next time.